game two when the Warriors blew them out. I mean, for the most part, the Lakers have looked like the more consistent team, especially defensively. Warriors can't score like they used to. They can't shoot. It's been Steph trying to do it by himself. You don't know what clay you're going to get night in and night out. Andrew Wiggins has been okay. He's better defensively than he is offensively. It's actually why I like the under team total, 117 and a half for the Warriors, just because of the fact that they've Really, the Lakers have defended the, the Warriors well. They've made Steph Curry's life miserable. They put Anthony Davis on him a bunch of times. They're running all these switches, so it's basically knowing, like, all right, we're not going to let Steph beat us. Go ahead, Clay. Or no, Draymond, we know you're not going to get us more than, like, seven points. So you, you're seeing this, this – you're seeing a situation now where the Lakers have said, this is what's working. We've got the formula down. Go ahead, Steph. It's up to you. Can you do it by yourself? And I just I, – I, the only thing about the Warriors, Sean, is that it's still the Warriors. It's like betting against Tom Brady. Like, I hated doing that, and I rarely did it because he always found ways, even when it looked like everything was catching up to him when it came to age. All of those, the biggest standout to me was no Devin Booker whatsoever and Jimmy Butler getting second team. I'm glad to see him get it, but I didn't expect to see him as a second team guy given the fact that the Heat didn't have the same kind of season. And really, neither did he, he this year. And, of course, it's not a postseason-type voting thing. The votes were already counted right. by the time he's had this unbelievable postseason where he's been, by far, the best player. I would say the biggest omission, right? Because you just named, what, 5, 10, 15 different guys. The Devin Booker is yep. not on there. Maybe, maybe Anthony Davis and Pascal Siakam's name comes to mind. But then again, it's like anything, Nick. Like, if you're going to take somebody off, who are you going to put on? If you're going to put somebody on, who are you going to take right. off? I don't, I, I, don't, I don't have too big of a problem with this list. All it tells me is that the NBA – it's just absolutely loaded with superstars. Yes. Think about that run at one point this year that, like, Damian Lillard had. Remember when he was just dropping all those 40-point games and hitting all those deep mm -hmm. threes and everything right around the All-Star break? And that was only good enough to get him on the third team All-NBA. LeBron? LeBron James? Dude, LeBron played as well this year. I know his team didn't have the ultimate success that we've seen in the past, but LeBron played as well yes. this year as he's ever played. And maybe the he averaged almost aren't... 29 points a game. He put up MVP dude, even... numbers this year. And I think it's more just that kind of like any of us to play ball at any level, you just get a little bit smarter. Some of us get worse because, you know, our yep. knees go away and, you know, they stop letting us play at the YMCA because we throw up too many bricks. Yeah. That actually happened to me one time. But I'm just saying, whoa, LeBron's whoa, whoa, whoa. getting better. Hold on. Yeah. Don't you don't, yeah. don't you bury that story. We're going to pause dude, what you're dude. about to say, don't... and you're going to tell me that story right now. They, you weren't allowed <laughs> to play there anymore? Well, I'm with the homies, right? So it's like the YMCA didn't kick me out. Like they, It's not like the front desk lady came around and said, hey, you've been asked to leave because you've put up so many air balls. But that's what popped in the, my head was like, you are so no, bad, we can't have you here. You make us look that bad. That wasn't the problem. The problem was that I talked myself up, and I was telling all the boys, I'm like, no, just get me out there. I'll knock, knock down a couple of shots. And let's just say I wasn't knocking down a couple of shots. And after a couple of times, you know, hit the rim. Yeah, they, they, they kindly asked me to leave, and, and I deserved it. But that's, you know team is just better when when you say a, you didn't hear a lot of people on the nuggets i think the reason is because we haven't seen them do it before right and a lot of times in the nba playoffs really all the time in the nba playoffs you have to go through the progressions and you got to be a team that grows and has those early losses but you could argue maybe denver's already gone through that it was just Nikola Jokic by himself, right? If they were healthy, this team was looked at as maybe a title contender a couple of years ago. You lose Jamal Murray for essentially two playoffs. You don't have uh, Michael Porter Jr. for either rep playoffs over the last two seasons because of all the injuries. It was Jokic throwing him on, well, his shoulders, which are a lot bigger than Kevin Durant's, and they're built for this, unlike <laughs> Kevin Durant. You know, but maybe now, because I'm with you, I, I found it really tough. Like, I sat back and was just like, man, I don't know. I, like, it's it's the Nuggets, and I, they were one of my sleeper teams in this offseason, but the West is so wide open. You got Durant and Phoenix, and they, they if they just, you know, Chris Paul can do what he does. And you start to go over these scenarios before the playoffs, but what we're starting to see play out is maybe it's a Denver Nuggets team that actually has already gone through those earlier losses. They've grown and gained that experience in the playoffs, which is a team like the Kings and what they just got, or I'd argue what the Cavs just got, or whoever. Some of these other young teams, you could argue, you go through that, and then you take that next, next step. We're now seeing the Nuggets actually taking that next step. Last night, yeah. again, coming off a 40-plus game performance, his over-under on BetMGM is 20 and a half, right? So he gets to 21, and we all get to cash our tickets and eat steak dinners. And everybody that I knew was playing the overs on that, right? Dude has 
17 points going into the fourth quarter. So I'm thinking, all right, he's going to knock down something, right? He's going to knock down yep. a couple of free throws or one of those crossover step back threes. He has to do something. Well, he didn't. He didn't have any. And then after the show, I'm thinking, all right, no big deal. It happens. That's gambling. And then I look at the box score. Nick, he only took eight shots. He was eight shots the entire eight. game. Dude, what the – how? And look, I understand that ultimately – he has turned into a winning player. The team is as good, if not better, when he is putting up 17, 19 points a game and he's dropping 13 or 14 dimes. We've seen also that when they don't have Embiid, he can put them on his back. I agree with you, man. It feels like for the first time, I want to say in a long time, but really for the first time since the whole Joel Embiid experiment, when they've had all these top five draft picks, we're talking about seven, eight, nine years, it feels like the whole process has been in the process. I've never bought into it until now. It literally took them being up three games to two on the Boston Celtics. It took James Harden having two plus, 40 plus point games and Bede being the MVP and it going back to Philly where I'm finally telling you, I'm a believer also. I think it's finally Philly's time. Well, the Warriors are still getting probably too much love on Bet MGM to yeah. win the championship. Yeah. They're 14 to 1 to win the championship. Guess who's also 14 to 1 to win the championship? The Miami Heat, bro. The Heat have yep. the same odds, even though the Heat are up three games to one in their series, and the Warriors are down three games to yeah. one. And let's not pretend like the Heat just got to the party, right? Like, let's not pretend like they just showed up with a keg and we're like, yeah, let them in. They've been at two of the last three. Eastern Conference Finals. They win one more game. The Miami Heat have been to three of the last four Eastern Conference Finals. That is consistency at its finest, as you point out. It's not like any coaches are that close to Eric Spolstra that are left in the playoffs. He's significantly yeah. better. Like, it, no matter who the Heat play, they've got the better coach. At this point, no matter who the Heat play, the Heat have the better player, at least as it's going right now, in Jimmy Butler. So, I'm with you, man. Not only could they really end up winning this thing? But their odds right now are completely disrespectful. Like, the Heat are 14-1. to 1. In my eyes, they should be half that. And then you've got Golden State, who's 14-1. to 1. They should be 30-1. to 1. Like, I think Golden State is completely screwed. They're down three games to one. They can't win on the road. Even if they win this series, then they still have to go on the road. Then they still have to win the finals. So, it's just crazy to me what these odds are right now. But, yeah, as of right now, the, the favorite to win, according to Bet MGM, the championship, that is, the Lakers and the Nuggets, the co-favorites at 3-1. to one. Well, now that they have the best odds, they are absolutely cursed, right? Because <laughs> we know all the <laughs> favorites sure. keep going down. So I'm like, all right, hmm, what's the long shot that I can believe in the most here? Well, why 14-1? to one? Why not go Miami Heat? Right, like, 14 to 1, that seems like the best value because they're ahead of the Knicks. They're going to move on to the next round, right? And do you think that the Philadelphia 76ers or the Boston Celtics are that daunting when this is a team that's already beat the Bucs? I don't know. Um, I, I kind of feel like they might also have more days rest if they wrap up against the Knicks. So looking at the odds that are in front of me, I'd go Miami, even though I don't look at them as a team that I think is going to win a championship. But the way these playoffs have played out, I'm just going with the long shot outside of my Knicks. I think they're done. But Miami yeah. Heat is where I would go looking at the, the odds there. Well, I, I think they can make it a seven-game series, right? And to your point, uh, both Devin Booker and Kevin Durant were held to under 30 uh, in the last – you know, they, it's happened three times in the postseason – Suns are 0-3 in those games. So we understand that they need them to be historically good. And when I say historically yeah. good, this is the first time in NBA history, nine games into the postseason since 1968, when Elgin, Baylor, and Jerry West both averaged 30, right? this is That's the last time this happened because teams are not put together in this way for the postseason, right? If you got two guys that you're relying on scoring-wise to win, it just doesn't work out. You need to kind of spread the wealth, especially when you get to the playoffs. And if you have that one guy, even that is more difficult. Uh, you know, before Michael Jordan won his rings, it was like, can a guy who leads the league in scoring ever win a championship, right? Well, we're kind of seeing that. Devin Booker is killing teams, and the Suns are not, like, running away with this. They're facing elimination. I think that to give up your defensive identity, to go get more scoring when you have an elite scorer like Devin Booker, 
I, 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 I'm with you. I, I see the Denver Nuggets as being a team that, okay, we got Nikola Jokic, we had Jamal Murray, now let's go get guys that just want to play defense and be scrappy, KCP, uh, Bruce Brown, et cetera, et cetera. I think their team is put together, battle-tested, and more ready to advance. Well, I, I, I can say outside of uh, GP2, Everyone else not named Steph Curry has been uh, a bit of a disappointment in this series. And I think I give more credit to Darvin Ham than anything else. Um, I still remember when we interviewed him during Summer League, right? And it's a live game, so it's not like, oh, we're going to ask him questions and he can, you know, have a soliloquy and dance around it. No, we're, we're broadcasting a game. He's sitting there with us. And the Russell Westbrook, LeBron James, like weird conversations in the summer were happening and who's getting traded. Mm -hmm. And there was just all of this like mess around the team, right? And so we, we kind of started asking him like, hey, Russell Westbrook. Oh, I believe in Russ. Uh, he's going to accept the role coming off the bench. He hadn't accepted that role the season before. You know, he, he really made his imprint with that. Then, okay, LeBron James, well, you know, LeBron's going to be LeBron, but at this stage, it's about Anthony Davis. It's like Darvin Ham understands what buttons to push, how to put a battery in a guy's back, whether it's Austin Reeves, you know, um, Lonnie Walker, fourth quarter, like Rui Hachimura, like whoever yeah. it is, <laughs> he knows how to, okay, th this is, and everyone uses the chess, not checkers thing. He knows how to use the Rooks, the Knights, the Bishop, any other piece, he doesn't need the, the queen to checkmate you. You know what I mean? Like, he can use all of the other pieces. He might even push a pawn up and get you stuck in a corner. So we're really talking <laughs> check. Darvin Ham has got it going on, all right? And that's really the truth of the matter where I'm not really blaming the Warriors. I think it's like shell shock. Like, oh, this is the kind of guy we're dealing with. And, you know, I've been thoroughly impressed in the few times that I've talked to him and really watching him coach this year, it's like, this is his first season as a head coach. You other teams messed up, not giving him an opportunity before. So Adam Scott, full disclosure, was one of the bets I made when I, as I said, my fat thumb blacked out when I saw the speed I'm withdrawing post. So I, I got him closer to 40, but I still like the 33. So that would be my lean. Although day feels like maybe closer on the precipice of this true breakthrough moment of the PGA win. I just love everything we're seeing from Adam Scott. I think Aussies and, and South Koreans this week will make up a huge chunk of this leaderboard. So many of the South Koreans live down here, they'll be, you know, very comfortable. And these open fairway Texas wins, oh, you know, always seem to make these Australians feel at home. So I think they're both due for a great week in terms of Day and, and Scott. Eileen Scott, who's Ironically, some of his missed putts will, you know, he'll be memed to death or they'll go viral because they're so embarrassing. But as a whole, he's actually putting fantastic. And that's a dangerous combination for a guy as we know is just a world-class ball striker. He could just pin stock unconscious for four straight days. Really a, a ton that I am um, looking at per se. I do, I, I am sort of picking on K.H. Lee, uh, where I can yeah. earlier in the week, I did lay some juice with some Tom Kim, who I do have, uh, who I do have to win this week. And going a little farther down the board, I've been looking for some uh, Christian Bezaden uh matchups. He's a guy that in, in the last little bit, twelve rounds or so, um, approach and putting, which is exactly the recipe here. He's been quite unconscious. So whichever site's given me favorable matchups on them, it's just a you know, it's such a hard question because so many sites even offer yeah. different matchups once you get sort of out of, out of um, you know, the, the top couple. But I, I'm looking mm -hmm. to pick on K.H. Lee and his attempt at a, at a three-peat. If we're looking for a guy at the top, I want to fade. I'd have been all out on fading Spieth, guys. So his withdrawal, um, other than catching it and maybe getting some good numbers, Jordan Spieth, granted, without the injury, he's going for a grand slam next week. This is the AT&T Byron Nelson in Texas. He's an AT&T spokesperson. He's in his backyard. Like the, the amount of obligations with where his headspace needed to needs to be in lieu of chasing a grand slam next week. I was a full on faith speed anywhere I could have. So I was really sad to see him withdraw. You do have Baltimore 
playing at Tottenham too. Sorry, sorry, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Got a boy. Uh, they're five and they're five and a half point favorites against the Titans on October fifteenth. That's going to be Week Six. I mean, I don't know. I think Tennessee could be really, really bad this year. Like looking at that now, that line could double by like Week Three or Week Four, maybe even before that. Baltimore at five and a half. They you may be looking at almost a double digit spread because that that offense is going to start to click. And that's going to be early in the year when Lamar Jackson plays well and he's healthy and the rest of that roster could be, you know, hopefully healthier, certainly than it was two years ago. There, there is a chance there you almost might. You're gonna, they're going to hold on your money forever. But you're getting a better number certainly now than I think you will once we kind of see Tennessee and go, ooh, yeah, Tennessee's, uh, they're going in the wrong direction.